Hello, everyone. I'm here with Uchenna Ilo, and I'm super excited to have him. We actually don't know each other that well, but I've met him via social media, and we have one thing in common. I think we have a lot, but one thing I know we have in common for sure is that he follows his intuition, and he, I can just see and sense that from not knowing him that well, that he does um, follow his intuition and kind of live in the moment by moment. And we'll get into all of that, but I wanted to have him on because I just go by energy and I felt his energy through Facebook and his other platforms. And I know he has a lot of cool things going on. And um, when I feel an energetic attraction or tug towards somebody, I just reach out to them. And Luchana actually did that with me and showed up in one of our, um, in one of our heart of the matter meetings. And I was like, who is this guy? And you said, oh, I just really followed my intuition. So I'm not sure why I'm here. And I'm like, okay, I got to get to know this guy. And then as I started um, getting to know you through Facebook, I was like, oh, okay, he's, he's operating in a similar realm. So I really would like to um, have him on the podcast. So welcome. And thank you so much for taking the time with us. Thank you. Um, th thanks for having me on, on your show. Um, yeah, we, we met for some time now. And, um, and yeah, I'm really glad to be here to share my my stories or my experiences about life. Yes, that'd be, that'd be yeah. wonderful. Okay, so I'd love to just um, start out by asking, what is it that, um, you know, just giving the audience a little more information about yourself, just letting them know a little bit about you um, since most of them probably won't know you. Okay, my name is Uchenna Ilu. I'm, um, I'm, I'm in Nigeria and I was born in Nigeria. Um, and I live in the UK, I live in Glasgow, Scotland now. Uh, so it's just been, um, for me, it's been, there are two sides um, of me. I, I believe in paradox. Um, there's a spiritual life that I've been living, and there's also the physical um, worldly life that I live. Uh, so on, on, on the physical aspect, um, I, I've been on a journey of, of self-discovery. Um, of course, I never knew I was on that journey, but uh, but life has brought me to where uh, to where it has brought me now. Um, it's been a life of ups and downs, um, a life of um, failures and uh, recovery from failures right from my childhood, and I've been doing that, uh, not being able to find the balance, not being able to understand. Um, how to how to navigate myself in this world so I've, I've always been someone that's gone from very high points to very low points mm. and having to walk myself out again and go back down again yeah um, but now i think i've reached a place where um, i finally accepted uh, because i believe i was running away from my from my spiritual calling uh, for a long time so i've always known i had those gifts yeah. Um, I knew I always knew I had the had the gifts of intuition. Um, growing up around religious circles, you know, some people that are very close to me believed I had the gift of prophecy. Uh, but I won't really call it prophecy. I'll just say it's a it's a knowing of what is about to happen. Mm, yeah, and I do, I I can't tell how how I had how I got that. It's, just, it's impossible for me to trace back, uh, but, and, but I can trace it back to my very early childhood days. So having that kind of gift, and um, I call it a gift because I've discussed with some other people and they said they've, never, they, they've not had those kind of experiences. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if everybody has this or if it's just me. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, so if it's just different people with different kinds of gifts in the world. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Because of that gift, you know, I I felt I knew I didn't belong, um, you know, in the how would I put it, in the usual worldly affairs. You know, what 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 people of my age and whatever you know like doing, they never interested me. I was always interested in deep philosophical thinking, um, mm -hmm. you know, discussions about life, and those are the things that that, that got me. Hi, to say, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, and, and people around me, you know, weren't really into that. So I, I just felt I was on the fringes, you know, and because of that, 
I had to abandon, um, you know, those internal those internal um, gifts and calling, and I had to join the world so I could fit into what was happening. Yes. Um, yeah, so I joined in. I got lost for a while, but even while I was lost, I still believe like I could still hear my intuition. I still I was protected by that voice. I knew when to you know when to go home and when <laughs> and when to stay out. You know, I don't I, I keep hearing the voice you know all the time, um, but I kept I kept ignoring it until I got to uh, to a point where I knew that if I ke- if I keep on ignoring my intuition, I was going to die. Um, I had already been in several accidents. Um, then I'd been in one, you know, and strange thing, um, the last one, the last accident I was in, <laughs> uh, strangely, people just come out from nowhere. And, and this is in Nigeria, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in the middle of the night, maybe 3 a.m. or 2 a.m., you know, people just come out from nowhere. And there are always two people that that come and help me out, you know, mm. push my car out of the road. <laughs> and, wow. and everything. Yeah. Uh, so at the end, I just knew that if I kept ignoring that voice, I was just going, I was not going to make it again. Um, yeah. So that's that's uh, that's how I've um, that's how I've gotten here. And now I've learned to trust myself. I've learned to stop being afraid. Of uh, of what I I've learned to start sharing what I know and like you know you know once I started writing those things on Facebook uh, you know, to me they were like like it was just normal that this is the life I live it's just this is right. these are the voices I hear every time yeah. so I and and I believed everybody was hearing that voice I never knew <laughs> it was something special so when I started writing it and I started getting the feedback it was shocking. Um, even mm. to, to, to today, it still shocks me because I can just write a sim- something that seems simple to me. Um, yeah, um, it sounds a bit profound to a lot of people. Right. Or maybe, maybe you, know, you know, they're not able to express it in those words. And I'll say I, I, was, I, I was lucky. My dad was like, uh, was quite educated. So he had already trained me, you know, in writing mm. and how to use words. Um, I I learned a lot from him under him. So so it's just, it's, everything ties together. Uh, I didn't I didn't have that choice. I didn't know I was going to be born to such a man. <laughs> uh, yeah. But he kept dictating to me every almost you know like all the time, and I was interested and I kept writing and writing and writing. So I've been writing right from when I was like ten or something. Oh wow! Uh, so it's not it's not new to me, and he always spoke from his heart. Yeah, and I was like his um, secretary or something, so mm. I kept writing whatever he was talking okay. about. Uh, yeah, so that's why I've gotten here. The intuition, how I know, is a spiritual uh, it's a spiritual gift. Uh, the power of intuition resides in its truthfulness. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it if if it feels true to you, um, there's there's an indescribable kind of um, how do I put it feeling that you have, mm-hmm. and just speaking your truth for me, you know, it gives me freedom. Yes. Uh, it makes me happy. It brings healing. Yes. yes. And that's why I talk about manifestation. Uh, truth is part of the 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 cocktail or the mixture of, of things you need to do, you know, yes. to manifest yes. what, um, what actually belongs to you. Mm-hmm. And recently, uh, you know, I've been seeing the effects. I've, I've been receiving some of the rewards mm-hmm. um, of the work I've been doing for years, for a long yes. time. And yeah, it's just magical now. I'm, I'm, I'm getting back to that, my original, um, so when I was able to, well, like see the future or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I still have a little that's, work. That's to normal do to me. You don't have to. <laughs> that's so normal. Yeah, I, still have, I, I still have a little work to do on myself to fully come back. Right. I haven't really surrendered everything that I picked up in the world. Right. And I know the things I need to surrender 
that would take <laughs> that would take me back. But I really don't want to leave the world like that because the world is quite enjoyable. Yes, yes. And you know what's really interesting is, um, like I said at the beginning, I just kind of sense the energy. And so the people that I'm talking to now, kind of all are what I say like operating in a certain realm, in that they've done a lot of work on themselves. And there's a certain point, like you said, where you start to trust the intuition, you start to follow it and you start to speak it. And then it starts to help you kind of rise your consciousness. And one thing I'd be really curious about is, so a lot of people say, you know, everybody has this gift, but the only, this gift of intuition. And the, the difference is just kind of the gradients, like the levels of, of different ways that people can access it. And so um, I'm curious for you, and then some people have these gifts that are presented really um, quite precisely in early age. And so when you talked about kind of as a child, were there, could you share some experiences that where you just kind of had an intuitive, like you could, you could see something or you, you know, um, like Michael Beckwith who's one of my favorite, um, he, he runs Agape and he talks about how when he was like six, that there was a, something falling off the grocery shelf on the other shelf. And he ran over and actually went to catch it. And the woman was like, where'd you come from? And he's like, I just had a feeling that that was, that, that jar was about to fall. And so, and then he went back to his house and his grandmother, and his mother were like, oh, Michael, that's really funny. You know, that's really funny. That, that's good. And I'm glad that you were able to play that little game in your, you know, six-year-old self. And they kind of just devalued that experience he had. And then, but he said, he just kept, kept seeing those things throughout his life. So were there times for you when you were a child that you had those types of experiences? Yeah, yeah, a lot. I had those kind of experiences a lot. Um, I, always, I always knew when someone was going to get injured when we were playing. Um, I could see it before it happens. Um, but, you know, I always felt like I just, I, I, I thought everybody was like me. Uh, <laughs> yes. I had no idea <laughs> that, uh, that, that I wasn't normal. Um, yeah, I remember one day, one day, I mean, me and my friends went for a, me and my friend went for a wedding. So we were sitting like on a high place and they're about to take the picture. And I just saw somebody. So I pointed to that guy that it seems like this guy is going to miss this picture. That like once he gets there, the, they would have taken the picture and he would miss out. Yeah. yeah. And I said it about one or two minutes before the guy started moving. Mm -hmm. um, it just happened like that. And I, I also remember, uh, well, I, well, I can't remember this one, but my, 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 my mom always used to say that, you know, that whenever we were playing as kids mm -hmm. and they want to find out what happened, um, I was the one that they used to call because they knew that I was never going to lie. <laughs> so I'll, <laughs> I'll always rat everyone out. Uh, I just couldn't lie. Like, yeah. it wasn't in my nature. That's what my mom said, you know, yeah. and I still feel it till today. Uh, you know, so it, it's in my nature to say the truth all the time. I don't, I don't know, and and it's not, it's not a very good thing. Um, but it's good, but it's not good to be extreme. Uh, sometimes right. not ev right. not everybody is prepared to hear. Yes, you know, the raw truth. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Time. So you have to. Yeah. So that's just that. That's how it, that's how it's been for me. And my mom also told me to, you know, that. Um, I remember, she, I remember she warned me um, about using my words um, because she said that anything I said um, usually happens. And she gave me that warning sometime maybe some yes. many years ago. Yes. Yeah, and it stuck with me. Uh, mm. Yeah. So yeah, and and even, I mean now now is now is like routine. Right. Right. I can see my kids now. You know, I can tell when they when they're about to move. I can sense when. When she's about to get, when she's about to injure herself, and, I, and I'll just come from the room, yeah. and she's just about to fall out, you know, something. So yeah. it's it's like how I put it, it's a lifestyle now because I, yes. I, I, I like I trust it now. Yes, yes, you've really honed yeah. the gift, and you really trust it. Yeah, and you know, yeah, yeah, I was looking for a job, and kind of like I just knew when it was going to come, and. It came at that time. Yeah, you know, I keep I keep telling my wife about divine timing, uh, but because it's not scientific, there's no evidence, there's no fact, there's nothing <laughs> to show anybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But we see it here in our home almost every day. She has mm -hmm. been seeing it, so she's starting to also believe um, yeah. that there's a pattern to it. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's really cool. And I, I, um, I've had a lot of similar experiences and I remember when I was starting my school, that's now it's in like year four and I spent all this money on finding a real estate broker to find a building for the school. And then somebody just sent me an email about a building and I just had the feeling that that would actually, I had a feeling that it would be an old college building that was a mile away. And we were spending all this time on that building. And I just kept thinking that it was that building because my, my feeling was that it would be a college building. And so, I was, I, so every time I typed in that address, I felt like that was it. And then it turned out that it was this other building that was twice the size and half the price. But it was like, I just kept trusting the feeling and then eventually that building just came into. Um, so I don't, I don't think I have such the, as precise of, a, <laughs> of being able to predict, you know, exactly. But, but um, I told mine, I think mine is a little bit, I don't know, it's, it's getting more and more precise now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't know. Um, my wife was doing her master's and she was really stressed looking for a job. And I told her to just wait that once you get the confirmation of the degree that you get the job. You know, the, the, the voice has just come to me like that. Yes, and, yes. And it just happened exactly like that. <laughs> yes. You know, the day, that, like, the day she got the confirmation from the school that she, that she, had, she had graduated, the next day, or I don't know if it's the same day, <laughs> she, she got um, a call. Yes. Uh, to start a job immediately. Yes. Um, because we already had two kids, we were, we were, we were stressed. None, none of us were working. Right. So I told her that when she gets her own, then I will get my own. <laughs> I don't like I, I really don't know where that knowing comes from but you just and trust I, it I don't yeah. think anybody can yeah so now I'm just I'm what I've done now is just to surrender to the voice yes and to keep um to keep acting you know on yes. it and not to do things that block the yes intuition. Yes. And that's so critical. And I want people to hear because a lot of people that listen to this podcast are very intuitive and they're trying to figure out how to really follow their intuition. And so I did think of another story that was really precise when I knew that we had to hire another teacher because we were going to have 75 students. And my very highly trained data person kept saying, no, 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 we only have 50 students. We only need two teachers. And I was like, just hire a third teacher. And they're like, no, 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 you can't. What's your evidence? What's your evidence? Like they want to see the data. And I was like, I'm telling you, I keep seeing 75, 75, 75. Every time I go in that spreadsheet, your number says 49, 51, whatever, but I know it's 75. So, and then of course we had exactly 75, like three months later. Um, but, but for people that are really trying to hone this and I want you to talk through kind of a little bit if they're, cause like I said, everyone has a gift, but there's kind of like level, you know, the different gradients and sometimes it's intergenerational, like maybe like, for example, I've met people that are like, you know, I'm a third generation psychic. So they've been practicing this for generations, but, but for you, um, you know, when you, feel, when you hear the voice, when you feel the, do you, do you hear it or do you see it? What's your um, kind of way of, of getting the intuition? Yeah, strangely, I don't, um, first I don't see it in, I don't see it in dreams. And I'm not a visual person too, so um, I hear it in words. Okay, so I, I learned think, that that's yeah. a clear audience. It comes as a feeling, but it translates to words. So okay, I'm able. That's why I'm able to write it down easily. Oh, I see. Trans, okay, because you hear it, and then okay, yeah. Because I was just learning. I was telling my wife this morning that there's clairvoyant and they see things. Clair sentient means you feel it. Clair audience means you hear it. So for you, it sounds like you kind of feel it and hear it. But you don't see it. Yeah, I feel it first, then I hear it. Yeah, but I don't like like I don't have that that um, visualization thing. Yeah, I don't know. yeah. I just found yeah. out that, that 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 I can't visualize anything. Ah, Even, interesting. Uh, okay. No matter no matter how hard I try, um, <laughs> I can only visualize it like if my eyes are open. Right, right, right. right. Like, it's not, yeah. You tell me to close my eyes and think about it. I can't. It's happen. just pure darkness. I don't oh, see that's anything. amazing. Okay. <laughs> well, but yeah, but you know, you know, you know how to use the gift. That's all that matters. So then when yeah. you get that, yeah. when you get the, the, the feeling and the, the words, um, you know, do you, do you act on it immediately? Do you write it down? Do you wait? Like, how do you, how do you proceed through your day-to-day -day life? Cause I think that's where people are. A lot of people have these intuitive whispers or these intuitive messages and they ignore them. And one of the reasons I want to start this podcast is to find people like you and say like, look, I'm telling you, if you can stop ignoring them and trust in something beyond your mind, the magic starts to come. 
Yeah, like I, uh, yeah, like I told you in the beginning, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big, big believer, you know, in, in paradox. There, there are always two sides to everything. Yes. Yes. So we have a choice at every time yep. um, to, to choose which side um, yep. we're going to lean to. Um, so me, once I hear the intuition, you know, I act on it immediately. Okay. Um, either by telling somebody something about it or by reflecting on it immediately. Yeah. Um, because I don't have any other thing to do. Like I, I've tried every other way and it never worked out for me. So this is the only way that I know that's natural to me. And this yeah. is how I've been living. Um, most, I did a PhD, you know, and I know it's going to surprise a lot of people, you know, but um, most of the answers I got just come intuitively. <laughs> um, I don't like, <laughs> uh, it's not by, by the amount of data I had or, or whatever. It just comes by luck, right. sheer luck right. most times, and it comes just when I need it to come. Right. Um, so I think I've, 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 I've done a lot of work in cultivation that the way I've done it, um, because I was always, how do I put it? Uh, I decided, you know, to be myself, to be my authentic self. Yes, yes. Uh, because that self, um, that self that I knew, when I was small, was fearless, um, and yes. I and I had, I had accumulated a lot of fear from yes you know, from society because yes. I wasn't fitting in. Yep. So I was trying so hard to be like the other people around me yep. to like what they liked, to go to club, uh, to like you know those things that they liked, but I just <laughs> didn't like it. I didn't, didn't like <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I I think I picked up a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear mm -hmm. from there. Yeah. Um, and somehow they, they always, like they knew how to get out of the trouble, but because I wasn't how I put it, that's why I don't feel everybody has this same kind of feeling. I don't believe every I think everybody comes with their own special kind of gift. Mm. And what I am explaining now is my own. I don't yes. like, yeah. Some other people may have this type. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You get them others have other types of uh, oh i see yeah but do you yeah. believe that everyone has the ability to tap into their intuition yeah definitely the intuition is part is okay. um is nature yeah yeah it's right, part right. Of nature. but you're uh, saying the gift that you have right inside it huh? right you're but you're, you're so you're the, saying the message that it brings may not be the same for all of us right no i agree with that yeah yeah i agree with that but everybody yeah, has the ability to tap you. into the intuitive message or like the, the flow of the universe and the nature. Yeah, it's part of the universe, it's part of nature. It comes, it's a messenger. And yeah, and everybody has the plug or whatever I don't know what to call yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if you choose to listen to this, that's okay. But if you're preoccupied with other things in the world, yes, you may not even hear it. Yes. Because it's a silent voice. It's not it's not a loud bang on your head or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, <laughs> If you're preoccupied with other things, you might feel it and you just ignore it. Yes. Because you don't think it's important. Yes. So how do you get to a point where you're not preoccupied? Have you just built the routines in your life where it's like, you're gonna um, trust it? I think, you know I, mean? I do not know, but, but I think um, suffering has to take you there. Yes. You have to suffer some kind of um, heavy loss or something, mm -hmm. uh, but not everybody um, views suffering as a, as a calling. Mm -hmm. as an awakening mm -hmm. as a how, how do I put it as a path yeah you know they say the um the obstacle is the path so you, you you're going to keep bumping on those obstacles you know because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah because you know because you're 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 moving blindly in the physical world we use our physical eyes to yeah to see and move around but if your spiritual eye is closed then you're, 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 you're going to keep hitting those. Yes, the obstacles. And whatever yes. That's yes. Yeah, yes, which are not meant to be, to be hitting. Um, yes. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's just how it is. And I had to go into solitude. That, that's, why, that's what brought me to the UK. Mm, I just okay. had to leave that environment that I knew, came here. Um, I don't even think I talked to anybody for like two years or something. Wow. You know, just to listen to my, like, yeah. I had lost myself completely. You had to get back to your like. I had to essence. get back to yeah. myself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I had to just get back to myself. Like it yes. took me time. Because I got I got lost in the world. I was doing so many different things, alcohol, uh, weed, and all that, yeah. all that, you know. 
yeah, yeah. Accidents, you know, going to cry, yeah, you know, just trying to fill that hole. Yeah. Um, that, and it was it, it was impossible to fill, and and right. you know, at the end, I found myself in a prison cell. Mm -hmm. Um, almost went to I faced a magistrate, magistrate court judge. So it was it was inside the prison cell that I was like not like I wasn't convicted, you know, like uh, what I put it, detention or something. Oh, okay. But I was like, wow, man, how did I find myself here? Right. You know, like that was the lowest of the lowest, and mm. that was when I just that, that that was when I decided, and I heard the voice again inside there telling me that if I don't turn it around now, that mm. next time I'm going to die. Right. Uh, so I was like, wow, amazing. It's time to run away from here. Yeah. <laughs> so I left. Um, I, I came here. Uh, I came back to the UK. Just uh, there was nothing else to do here, so I just decided to start studying again. Okay. I started doing my master's, started doing a PhD, um, but that wasn't really why, what I came here to do. The real reason why I came here um, was to restore myself, mm -hmm. um, was to heal myself, um, was to reconnect with my spirit and to be who I am, not to be ashamed of being who I was. Yes. Yeah, that was the real reason I came here because I, I, I've always been ashamed of myself because I didn't like, I didn't like my real self yeah. because people didn't accept that self. Yeah. The people around me didn't accept it. So I thought there was something wrong with it. It wasn't until I started writing it on Facebook that I found out that it's actually a gift. Yeah. No, that's so beautiful. Oh, that that I'll being, being ashamed of is actually right. what 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 people need. Yes. And yeah, yeah. So it just be that's that's how the journey has been for me. It's about speaking your well, truth. Yes. Reconnecting with yourself again if you still remember yourself. Um, because it's a, it's it's quite a long way back. Um we 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 bury ourselves inside trauma, yep. abuse, and yep. so many things that happen. In, in, well, just, I mean, just going through life alone, going through school, uh, you know, the, the, the education itself is a blockage. Yep. Your true self. Yep. Because you're not learning about yourself. Um, the culture, society, everything, the music, every, everything is just, uh, you know, <laughs> it's an, like, it's trying to obscure you. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, from who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's what it is. It's just how I put it. They are, they are all creations, you know, to um, to make us feel. I don't know what I don't know what words to use to use right now. To make us feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. you know, to entertain us basically, or to yeah. distract. Distractions. Yep. Yeah. So they are all distractions. You know, they are all they are. They're all distraction, but but I'm happy now that you know people are talking. Um, mindfulness has gone mainstream now. It really has. Yeah, you know, it's like cool to meditate, yeah. mm -hmm. meditation, yeah. and coming back to yourself. And that's how I think I found the balance. Now I always return back to myself. I always return to the present moment. Yes. Always. And once I do that, I find balance immediately. Yep. I just remember, you know that. There's really nothing to stress about. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's yeah, yeah, because it's we are, I don't know. Yeah, we have this. Um, how do I put it? We have this um, propensity, you know, to catastrophize about yes. the future. Oh yeah. We, I don't know if he, if it happens to you, <laughs> but once I wake up in the morning, the first thing, you know, the fear flows. It's like my whole like. Okay, when I go to sleep. Mm -hmm. It's like my my whole body and everything resets mm -hmm. back to factory setting. And when I wake up in the morning, um, my brain is trying to tell me to go back to my routine. Yes. Yeah. But because I have that self awareness now, mm -hmm. I know that that is just I mean it's just a distracting yes. <laughs> yes. voice, you know, because it's not my real voice. It's not my intuition. Yes. It's, yes. it's too loud. Yes. So I know that's not my intuition. And immediately I just flip the script. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I just say no, and that's it. How do you how do you do it? How do you flip the script? What do you do? What are your practices so other people can learn? You just do. You don't even think about it anymore. You just do it. <laughs> no, I I actually hear the words. You know, like it starts okay. telling me, you know, it starts bringing fear and you know doubts about things that are that are that I already assured of the, the day before. 
Yeah. It starts putting doubts in my mind again. Yeah. And I'll be like, no, this, uh, because I, I talk to myself a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know if everybody does that. I saw a video uh, where some people said uh, they don't hear any voice in their head. Like they can't talk to themselves in their head. So that mm -hmm. means not everybody's the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but for me, it's, it's a conversation. Right. In my head, it's always yeah. a conversation. Yeah. Uh, so now I know that I have a choice. Um, either to look forward, you know, in fear, because none of them are real. Yeah, exactly. Or to, yeah, or, or to believe that there are good things that are coming. Yes. So, but the body, the mind doesn't want to, doesn't like, it's not designed, it's no. designed to keep you safe. Yes. Keep you from danger or whatever. So yes. it keeps thinking that something bad is going to happen. Um, yes. When that is still not true. <laughs> yeah. It's so not true. Yeah. So yeah. I listen to that voice first thing in the morning. Uh, once I wake up, I don't just rush to get my phone or whatever. Right. I, I, I calm down mm -hmm. and try to listen to myself, try to plan the day, try to reassure myself, you know, that this is the path I should take. This is um, that I'm in control yes. of how I respond to stimulus. Um, yeah, and that's that's how it's been for me. So I'll I'll call it a, a kind of meditation first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to get up quite early, maybe around five o'clock or something, when everybody's asleep, when it's dark, and, you know, <laughs> and I just have some alone time before people wake up. Um, yeah, to tell us what to do. So that's what I, that's what I've been doing. It's just magical for me. But I think I have this other gift of writing, like I told you. Yeah, you do. Um, I didn't yeah. choose my dad, so. Um, I think he had a way with words. So I think I picked that up naturally too from him. And some other people have the gift of talking, singing. Right. Right. There are different forms of art, drawing, painting. Right, right, right. I can't do those things. <laughs> <laughs> but you can write. <laughs> but, um, but I can write, um, I can write about truths and just being fearless and not being afraid to speak about any part of my trauma, any part of my pain, yeah. um, is what brings healing to me. Yeah. I don't know why my, okay, okay. yeah. And then you, so I what ask you how has your journey been? Sorry, I'm not asking you anything. <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. I'm here to ask you questions. You don't need to ask me questions. I'll insert my opinion okay. when I need to. <laughs> I don't, I only get to talk to you one time. So people hear me all the time on the podcast. So no, um, but no, what's really, what's really interesting to me is what you're talking about is like you said, so you, my belief is that you, you're born this like divine being, you know, this little baby. And then as you go through life, you, like you said, there's the conditioning of the school and the parents and the culture and all these things. And you start to dim your light and you start to literally cover the, um, this, this shining light with all these different dense energies. And then as you get older and older, you kind of forget who you really are and you're trying to, and what it's like the whole journey is just remembering coming back. It's like a great remembering process. It's just coming back to who you really are. And you think you're actually um, adding stuff, but you're just taking stuff away. You're just taking away all the false layers. And as I hear you talk about your story, it's like you started taking away the false layers and then you found a way to Real, I mean, you. so some people have, I like to think about it as some people have um, an awakening that happens from, you know, like you ended up in a prison cell and you're like, okay, I got to listen to this voice now. Other people, it's like more gradual. And um, so one of my spiritual teachers always talks about like, you can learn from the light, like 99% people learn from the dark. Like they wake up because of the dark, because they're in a prison cell or because they're, you know, in an accident for your examples there's a small percentage that can wake up from the light. Like, okay, I'm just going to keep seeing that all these beautiful experiences are giving me something, but majority <laughs> have some sort of, like you said, they have to go through some sort of suffering. And as you went through that process, you were able to really come back to the truth. And then you started saying the truth and then the universe is really precise. And it started supporting you and being like, Oh, we're going to put you on Facebook now <laughs> because we want you to realize that, what you, your gift is a gift. And this is not what everyone's like, this is not everyone doesn't have this ability just to hear this and write it so precisely. I mean, like I said, I love what you write. I always comment or write as I, I like it or it's, 
it's like like it's profound <laughs> and you're like i just write it it's not it's not anything that's too complicated for me <laughs> but um but through the journey you figured out how to really trust your intuition and yeah. uh, that's yeah. that's humongous yeah yeah that, that's something that i've learned from the from, from the journey like you know when i started my facebook page um i was just making videos you know straight from intuition yeah um, and I thought sometime I started making I started making these small videos, these one minute videos or whatever. And they were going viral, they were getting like one of them has about 45 million views or something. Oh my gosh. Like, almost 50 million views. And it's something I just wrote out of. Like I just woke up and just started writing it, you know, mm-hmm. seven habits of this, seven, whatever of this. <laughs> yeah. Um the, and then I found out that because after I'd done that, you know, that when I tried to do it purposefully, yeah. <laughs> you know. It doesn't make that much impact. It doesn't. Uh, I've had the same experience. If it just comes like that, those are the ones that actually go viral for me. Yeah. But when I'm trying hard to, you know, to replicate something I've done before. Yes. You know, um, yeah, it doesn't work out for me like that. Uh, so th- that's why it's hard to trust. It's not easy to tell somebody um, not to, how will I put it? Not to overthink too much about things. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't do too much of thinking. I, I won't. I, I think for a while when I have when I have a problem to solve, uh, but I don't really like how. Like, my thinking is is just a battle between the intuition and yeah and the yeah and the normal mind. So it, it's not like I'm I'm sitting down thinking about it. No, um, I wait for the intuition to come. Yes, to counter. Yes. <laughs> you know. Whatever it is I'm doing, uh, yeah. So uh, that's how that, that's how that's how it's been working for me. It's just been a very powerful experience, especially on social media. Um, mm-hmm. I was shocked when people started rush coming when I started getting a lot of following. And even now, I've I've been silent for a while um, because I've been manifesting a lot of things. Just a few that I mentioned to you. Um, yeah. Some other things are private that I don't want to mention. Yeah, yeah. But. From uh, from the end of September, so when I stopped, well, I listened to the voice again. It told me to stop writing. I okay. just re- relax and receive. Yes, you know, receive a few things, and I've been receiving those things consistently, even up until today that I'm discussing yes. with you. Up until today, something happened again today. I got another invitation to do something today, and the, the, and you know, so I. I um, how do we teach this kind of how, how do we teach it that that is the issue how do we teach it um i've been trying to f- figure out a model you know for what i'm doing yeah um, i've be, you know i've found out different elements of it i know there's true there there i mean it's oh <laughs> <laughs> there's so many elements to it but i'm trying to build a model and uh, to write a book you know about it. I know it can't really be written about, but at least just to share my own story um, yeah. of how of how I've experienced it. Um, and that's just what I need to do. And what you're saying about the darkness, most people learn from uh, most spiritual teachers, well, even from the holy books, or, or the, the so-called books, you know, most of them went through some, some kind of suffering. Yeah, they do. Before they woke up. Um, to 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 who they really were, um, the Buddha himself, Jesus, all of mm-hmm. them, all of them went through some kind of suffering. For sure, um, Moses in the Bible. Um, then there's this guy that wrote about the 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 is it the hero's journey or something? Can't remember. Oh yeah, Campbell. Joseph Sorry. Campbell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then the yeah. book I liked the most was um, Paulo Paulo Kelo's book, um, The Alchemist. Oh, the, that's a great one. Yeah, yeah. about yeah. a guy that was sitting on his he was actually sitting on his treasure and he stood uh-huh. up and went and traveled, you know, a long distance, almost died on the way, only to find out that he was actually sitting on his all the all the time. You know, yeah. so that that's how we are, you know, we are we are all born with that gift. Then, yep. And then we go in search for it. Yes, yes. But it's not outside. Exactly. Yeah, it's inside. You can't find it. I can't find it outside. You can't find happiness yeah. outside. You can't find yeah. anything yeah. good outside. <laughs> Precisely. Everything good is inside, really. It really uh, is. Yeah. 
But so that's why a lot of people are struggling with this um, COVID, this pandemic. Um, I know people have died, so, um, with this, but it's really been, it's another way, again, you know, to make the whole world, um, how would I put it, to make the whole world meditate. Yeah, no, it's, 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 everybody just needs to stay. <laughs> yeah, everybody but calm down, stay. slow down. Yeah, slow down, don't go anywhere again, it's just too much. Um, and yet some people are, you know, a lot of people are fighting against it. Um, yeah. I've, I learned to embrace it. And I've been, I've been receiving most of the blessings inside this pandemic. Me too, me too. People, I'm, I'm like, I can't I'm afraid to say it now. because, you know, people are really suffering. No, for sure. It. Um, but, but, I, but I think we should just speak our own truths. You know? I agree. Yeah, I'm receiving a lot of blessings inside this pandemic. Um, not going out even makes me happy. I didn't I have, uh, I, I forgot what it means to go out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the same way. I think it's the I'm sensitive really souls. Mean. Yeah, the sensitive souls are like, I can't take all this energy because we feel all the energy and it's like, <gasps> I can't go back out there. It's so calm inside here. Um, you know, I wanted to say one thing. I wanted to share one thing that I thought was really interesting. So you said you're working on a book. Is that what you said? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, so we will share that. Um, what do you want to tell? Do you have you like written it already or are you in process? No, no, it's in the process. I have, I have one book I've written. Uh, oh, cool. I don't know it is. The Art of True Love. Uh, okay, you know what we can do? We can put it into the show notes to make sure that people know about it and we'll put it when we share this. But I wanted to share- okay, yeah, yeah, I have one book. Um, okay, it's The Art okay, of True cool. Love. It's, not, it's, not, it's, yeah, it's just a book of my quotes that I write on Facebook. Oh, great. Uh, great. About love. So I just compiled all of them, all of them tried to oh, make things idea. like yeah, a coherent kind of book. Um, yeah. this, the second one I'm writing on, I'm writing about now, is called the the wisdom of pain. Okay. Um, I just, I, I'm I'm writing everything I've learned from my from my pain, from my suffering, um, from my mishaps to world in life. Yeah. Um, I don't regret any of it. I just love like I love the experience I've had. Um, I don't think I regret any any moment at all. I don't feel like I wasted my my 30, my 35 years or something. <laughs> um, no, yeah, so because easy. now I can actually stand on, on those failures, on those mistakes. Yes. Yeah, so they are propelling me because I have, yeah, because I, in fact, it's, they're actually a source of energy for me. Anytime, I, anytime I'm looking for something to write about or whatever, I can just dig back there. Yes, yes. And, yeah, and bring some, and pull out something and, and write about it. So. Yes. It's ex the experience for me is like a product. Um, so what I've decided, you know, now, the way I'm living my life now is not to be a consumer, you know, of, 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 of what the world has to offer. Yes. Uh, but rather to be a producer. Yes. Um, to be inside the arena, you know, to lend my own voice. Yes. Uh, to speak my own truth and not to be ashamed, you know, yes. of what yes. I know. Because everybody is um, uh, the most confident people, you know, really have no, have no idea what they're doing. Yeah. Um, but they are, they are confident in their own uh, <laughs> yes. ignorance. That's just yeah. true. <laughs> but the people that know um, have a lot of self doubt. Yes. Um, about what they know, and that's how I felt for a long time until I yeah. discovered, you know, the power of words, um, the power of language. And how and you know why we need to speak up and put a, put a counter argument you know to what is happening and yeah so I I'm not a friend again to to culture and this is the way things are done um, mm -hmm. I feel I'm here I feel I haven't even started my journey I'm I'm here to challenge something I'm here to change something yeah um, I'm not I'm not very clear exactly on what it is. I'm here to change, but I know, I know I'm here to fight to to, to change something. Yeah, uh, I'm still looking. I'm still waiting um, to hear to hear exactly what I'm here to do. I, yeah. I I believe I've been building the following. I've been building the army of people, uh, yes. of supporters that will support me. I can um, see that. Yeah, I've never been tempted, you know, to convert it into money or something like that, um, because I know that that's not why. Uh, that's not why I was giving the gifts. Right, uh, right, right, right. Yeah. I, 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 I have a very strong feeling that that is not why I was giving this, mm, this gift. Yeah. 
of intuition. Yeah. Um, so you see, I, I'm here to heal. And I know the money is going to come. Yeah. yeah. I, I can feel it. Yeah. I feel the reward is coming. And it's coming yeah. in trickles. That's how it's been coming. So I'm learning mm. patience. Yeah. I've learned how to be patient with myself. Um, I've learned how to be happy without the material things. I had a lot yes. of it before, but I lost it all. You know, that when I when when I when I lost, I've I've been through a lot of wreckage. You know, I mm -hmm. I, I wrecked my life. Like I lost everything, everything, mm -hmm. and I was even owing after working for about eight years or so in the bank. Yeah, uh, um, I came out uh, in debt. Mm -hmm. I was owing people when I came out. Right. Uh, so. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen a lot of loss. Yes. You know, it's, <laughs> well, I can laugh about it now, but yeah. then it wasn't funny, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, but looking back, you know, it was, uh, I knew I had to lose it. If I didn't lose it, I wouldn't have found myself. Yes. Yeah, yeah and you I know, was lost inside it, so I, I just yes. had to, like, yeah, be, um, life had to take it away. Yes. Yeah, because that, that thing had been calling me for a long time. I, I've been running away from it. I've been running inside the material things. And it's found a way, it always finds a way to pull me out. And mm -hmm. I'll find a way to go back into the material things again. Yeah. So until that final right. time, I, that's when I, yeah, that's when I just had to surrender. It had, it had to be painful <laughs> to enough. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. It had to be painful enough for you to say, like, okay. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll stop it. it. <laughs> yeah, I just stopped there. Yeah. So, and, and since then, you know, I found happiness, I found joy, I found inner peace. Uh, I've been attracting the kind of people um, that understand me, that love me, that, uh, yeah. And, and the people that I was trying to make, like, I was trying to make some people understand me before. Um, uh, so I was what you call a people pleaser. Me too. That's what I was yeah, told to give I, up. I, I, couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't say no. You know, so they were using me, me you know, too. And, and all that. So I had to let go of all that. And yeah. yeah, I think this the, the spiritual journey is more about letting go. Yes. Than yes. adding anything. Because you know, yes. there's really nothing to add. It's just meant to be <laughs> like you're meant to shed those yes. layers, those those things that, yes. that are blocking your light. Yes. That's that's what you're meant to do. So yes. it's it's all about letting go, really. So if you have any problems with it, then there's something you're still hanging on to. Yep. Somewhere, somehow. And I know I'm still hanging on to a few things. I haven't let everything go. Oh yeah. I know if I let it go, I'll be hearing the voice again that if I let all these things go, you know, I'm I'm going to get more of the like how do I put it, more of the intuition or more of whatever that magic is. Yeah. There's there's more of it in store for me. Yes. I just need to let go, but, but I feel that if I let go of the world completely, <laughs> I won't even know, like, yet, I won't know what's happened. So that's, that's, that's where I am now. I'm really struggling. Yeah, I'm but you really, will when really you're ready. You will when yeah. you're ready. You will when you're ready. When you are ready. I don't want to let go of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, like, I'm afraid to do it. Let me, yes. I won't lie to you. Yeah, so, yeah. So I'm just using about half of my um, half of my right. magic or something. But you know that it's not full. Huh? That's pretty profound that you know that though. Yeah, like I'm, you have I'm, a deep knowing. You know, I'm like, very aware I'm, when I'm ready I'm to aware. let go. Yeah, yeah, you know that when you're ready to let go more of it, that more is going to come. But you're just not. I just what I'm sensing and feeling right now is you're just not ready at this moment. And time is all an illusion. So in this world that you're sitting in right now, in the seat you're sitting in right now on November thirteenth. You're just like, I'm not ready to let it go right now. But you could be to in one second from now or 10 years from now. I yeah, don't know. but that would be full spiritual life or something. Yeah. <laughs> it will be. And I saw this interview with this woman who was in Australia and she's 65 and she said she just knew she had more to let go. And then one day, like, she just let it all go. And it just all was like the most profound experience of her life. And like, you saw her on the interview and she, she was just, she was present. She wasn't a person. She was present. She wasn't a person. So like she was literally just sitting there and you could see that she was in her body, but she wasn't, there was nothing else to let go of. And she said, yeah, I've been doing this journey for like 41 years. 
and it was at 65 that I finally was ready to let go of all of it. Wow. <laughs> it yeah, was great. Yeah, I, I'm going to share yeah, it with you. Just been, um... I can't remember her name, but I'll share it with you. But I wanted to point out one thing that I thought was really interesting. I want people to hear is that um, what you're talking about, and you said you want to write a book about this, is we're taught to use the mind. Like you said, when you try, the same thing happened to me when I try and I hired these business coaches and other coaches, and they're like, do this, do this formula, do that. And whenever I try and follow that, like nobody will respond or like nothing, there'll be nothing, right? But when I follow the intuition, then it's the law of attraction and like people come back and you know, the right people come in. And, um, and what, but what we're taught is that, so what you were talking about is like, instead of starting with the head and then trying to write something, you actually start with the heart or the intuition and then the writing just flows through. And um, you asked how we teach that. And that's what we're doing right now in this inner Sangha series that I actually sent it to you, but we, we have a group of 13 and um, we're spending 13 weeks together and that's all we're working on. It's just, we're like, get out of your mind, like get out of your mind, get out of your mind. Like if you can just follow the intuition literally moment by moment and just drop into presence, that's when all the magic comes. And what I really feel strongly about is that the reason I titled this a conscious way forward in this podcast is because with COVID and this, where we are right now is that like the actual, um, the humanity is rising in consciousness. Like it's happening. Like you said, meditation is more popular. Like these, there, there's a different time that we're in and people are going to start leaning on their intuition more because they're gonna realize that this old way, this material world, is just not working anymore. You know, and it's, it's a little bit, a little bit at a time that people are going to say, wait a minute, why am I following this material world formula that is just pain and suffering when I could actually just follow the truth and more like, I really do believe, and I have this, this is a sense that I have that more and more people are, are going to wake up and um, it's going to happen rapidly in the next 10 years. It's going to happen in the next 10 years and more and more people are going to wake up. And so when you, so please write the book, <laughs> teach a thousand courses, whatever you need to do, please write the book because your experience is so interesting and people will be like, Oh, wait, I can do that too. Like I can actually just trust myself and maybe not live a life of misery. Like, is that really possible? And so the more people we can show that it's possible, more people maybe will actually believe us because right now they're not going to believe us. They're going to be like, mm, whatever. I don't really believe you. But when I see your posts and I feel your energy, I'm like, oh, I believe him. I know he's manifesting left, right, and center. And maybe it's not the money, but manifestation abundance can be, you know, love and joy and happiness, all these other things. I mean, I know this guy is manifesting left, front, left, right, and center. Like it's coming everywhere. And I agree with you, the money's coming. I can feel it. Yeah, the money is trickling in now. Um, yeah, of course. It's like, it's really, it, it, like, I, I've been tested for years, you know. Yeah. Um, whether I should go back into the world, whether I should go back into the material world to look for money. Yeah. And I decided not to do that. Yeah. Um, I decided to stay with my suffering uh, intentionally, um, yeah. just to stay without those things. Yeah. And not to have enough and let myself be enough for me. Yes. That was what I wanted to do. And I, yes. and I did it and I was happy alone. I was happy being by myself. Yes. I was happy with the little I had. You know, then I, I attracted someone, but I attracted a wife that was also that was also happy to be happy with me there without anything. And we've been together for about three years uh, oh, nice. with nothing yet. <laughs> and, and just now, you know, things just started trickling in, and and yeah. I knew it was coming. Like I told you earlier, I told her it was coming because yeah, that that voice told me again. Yep. that you know it's coming. You know, just with, <laughs> and now it started trickling in a bit. It's still not yeah. much, but we are not, we are we are we are um, we are noticing that that um, that is not going to determine how we live because we have lived without it before. So... Yeah, well, and do you understand? <laughs> do you understand your energy like, is massive currency because we're happy um, without it. You know, yes, like we're very very. Happy. So it, it might even be a cause a source of I don't know what to call it. It's also a problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, well, comes, I, I, if, if, yeah, because he comes with his own energy. Right. Money has his own. It does. Um, oh, yeah, it's, it does. The spirit is of his own. Uh, because I, I had some of it before. So it's actually a spirit. And you need to be able to control it. You need to be able to um, to see it for what it is. 
Yes. Um, yes. It's a it's an ex it's a, it's a paper that we use to exchange value. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, it, it. It, it does. It. It's not who you are. It's not. Uh, it's not your identity. It has no. nothing to do with happiness. No. It doesn't make you happy. It cannot make you happy, no, no matter how much of it you have. No. It's a, it's a, it's to bring more responsibility, more problems for you. Um, so yes. if you don't know how to manage, how to really um, manage it and use it to your advantage, uh, then you're going to suffer again. So. I, we, we've, we've discussed it already, and I've told her how my own plan of managing the abundance that's going to come in whatever yes. form it's coming in. Yes. Um, the kind of life I want to live. Yes. Even if, it, even if it's coming, it, a lot of it is coming, I will know <laughs> how, to, how to manage the energy, basically. How, yes. not to, how not to let it change you. Yes. Not to get buried inside the... The, the, joy the seduction, or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that's what it is about. Um, just being like letting yourself feel you. Be, just um, being enough, being alive is enough. Just yes. knowing that 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 is you that had the power. Yes. To manifest it. Yes. So is you that has the power. You you are the power. Basically, you are the light. That's why yes. you are the light of the world. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and you know, what I want to tell you, though, is that when we did our donation based series and um, I was sending it to you and I think he said something like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to donate something. And I responded. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. Like your your energy to me is currency. So you well, yeah, I told you I didn't have anything. Right. Oh, I yeah. forgot. So, hey, you can now I have small. So uh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I don't want you to pay I'll, me. I'll, I'll help out. But then I was really like uh, zero. No, I'm telling you, I don't want you to give me any money because what this is the exchange. This is the currency exchange. So the energy is the currency. And so what is what is really important for people to hear is that you have abundant energy. And don't let's not confuse it money and abundance. Money is just one form of abundance. So you have abundant energy, which is like, you know, you're connected to nature, you're connect, I'm sure you're connected with, you know, the source, the universe. You're you have the internal energy you know that the source is all within you and so that's the abundant energy so i just i think i said to you just the fact that you even responded to me means that that's an abundant energy exchange right there <laughs> so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know so i want yeah, people to understand that. that i love what you're saying about the money exchange because it's um and my feeling is i know i've been a teacher and worked in nonprofits and never really made that much money i always had enough to be stable for the most part except for not when i was a child but as an adult and um and I just feel like I know a lot of money is coming and I want to give a lot of it away. So you're right. Your thing about like, um, you know, your gift is not to make, you're not to make money off your gift. It's like, yeah, I just know that whatever comes in, like 90% of it's going to go back out, you know? So if it's exactly, that's just, that's, just, I know that's what I'm going to do because similar to you, I have lived with nothing. And I know that those are my happiest times, maybe not happiest, but those were the times when I, I realized I don't need the money. The money is just, I love how you said it. It's just, it's basically just something we put, it's a, it's a bill that we put value on. And then that every, but what it really is, is it becomes a reflection of you. And if your internal state is so abundant, then you don't have money problems <laughs> because everything's a mirror. So there's, there's no issues with, with money when it's just my in, inner landscape is so clear and it's so abundant. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The abundance is um, the recognition um, that that you're enough, that you, that that you are abundance on your own. You know, um, I used, I used to struggle. You know, when I, when I listen to those teachers that, that that said that say that we are the whole universe in you know, or something, you know, yeah. in, a, in a drop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm starting to understand, you know, yeah. what they mean by that. And yeah, if if you're everything and we are really connected to everything, um, most people don't believe these things that we are saying. That is a problem deep down inside of no, them. Um, I've listened yeah. to most people talk from their trauma. They talk from their fear. The yes. the 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 voice you're hearing from them is not their voice. It's a voice of uh, it's a voice that has been conditioned to believe those things to 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 believe whatever you know has happened to them before um yes and they, and they, exactly. they they have agreed to give so much power to um to their past yes. to their mistakes 
um, to their trauma and to their suffering. And instead of instead of listening to the suffering, instead of listening to the pain, and yes. and letting go of whatever it is that's bringing that suffering. Um, yep. No, it's, it's not it's not easy to let go that's why like you said 99 percent of people um, have to go through some kind of pain before they can let go yep uh, it's, it's hard to let it's really not it's not easy to let go and and, and like i told you i've let go of i think about half of it or more no more than half maybe <laughs> um, but i'm still hanging on to i'm still clinging on to some parts of it to some to, to some things yes. but i know i'm clinging on to it so that's why it's different for me. I'm self-aware. Like I'm yeah. very aware I that agree. I'm clinging on to this yeah. thing. And I know the reason why I'm clinging on to it is that I don't want to go 100% spiritual. Um, I, I'm afraid of what will happen if I bring out the full light. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know why I'm afraid of it. Um, mm. But like you said, I've been hearing that voice exactly what you said um, that it's not yet time <laughs> <laughs> but you know that voice i'm saying that i'm still that i will still have to let go of it yeah uh, yeah but i don't want to invite any suffering that will make me let go of that one right um, right so i probably will have to let go of it and when when i let go fully or maybe 90 percent or something <laughs> yeah. uh, i'm sure you see um you see more impact I know I'm going to feel more impact because I know um, I'm right now. I'm just listening to the intuition. I haven't gotten back that um, the the gift I had of um, of actually being able to predict things in my life and to see things before they happen. You haven't, I haven't gotten you... back that one fully. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So you think that's a little blocked right now? That's that is blocked. Yeah, okay. it's blocked in a way. Okay. Um, for me to get it back, I know what I have to do. <laughs> I love that. I know it sounds a little bit spooky and all that, but this is just no, my no. life. And I have to I tell you it. about my life. This is the truth about myself. Um, yeah, and I can, like, I know it's the truth um, because it has formed a pattern. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so if something has formed a pattern in your life, then it is true. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I that's how I know that's uh, that's how I know it's true. Um, that's why I think that's why I'm also withdrawing a bit, you know, from social media. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's time to let go again. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because I let go, you know, like once in a while, I let go of some things. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I think it's time to let go of something again. Uh, that's why I withdrew a bit um, because I can't speak the truth like. It is blocking that thing I'm holding on to, you know, is blocking my truth. Yes. And I cannot write something that's not true or something I'm right. not Right. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And you know, my, yeah, so my that's coach, why I'm not writing anything now. No, that makes sense. And now that you mentioned it, I haven't seen you write recently. But um, my coach yesterday told me that in this in the cycle, the spiritual journey, there's purification and transformation, and it's a constant cycle. And so um there's moments where you just, there's something else you have to purify so that you can transform. And I've gone through that exactly. in the last, yeah. And I've gone through that in the last um, month or so. I had a really powerful purification about a month ago with a, a, a channeler and a, a reader, someone who was reading my energy and she cleared a bunch of stuff. Well, I cleared it, but she helped me. And it was like, boom, then the transformation came. And so I was just ready at that moment to have that purification, <laughs> but I wasn't seeking it. I wasn't trying to arrive to it. I just had an intuition that I should reach out to her. I saw her on a podcast, reached out to went to her website, found her on the website. Then it was like, I wasn't even doing anything. My body was not doing it. It was just happening. Like I went to her website then I clicked on and then I saw this and it was like total intuition. There was no mind. And, um, and then I saw that she had a session on my birthday. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, okay. This is all just kind of divinely guided and then it was one of the most profound experiences i've ever had her 90 minute session and um uh, this, no, this this uh, this this our discussion really is nick i don't know um thanks for the discussion um i remember the first you. time I, uh, when i was asking you you know what questions do you have another uh, <laughs> i and you said we should just uh, we should just flow we should just um, go with our yeah. situation so i was like okay 
this this gets to be the worst interview ever. But it turned out to be the best. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah, really, I can like I can feel there was actually a reason for this. I didn't. I, I was going to cancel it because I haven't slept since yesterday. Me too. I was going to cancel it too. For. I was gonna cancel it I was, too. I was, I, was preparing for, I was preparing for something, you know. So I so I didn't sleep all night. Okay. Up until eleven o'clock, I did the activity I was meant to do. I tried to go back to sleep, but I couldn't sleep. Um, I th- I slept for about three hours or so because I knew we had this meeting. Yeah. Um, I woke up by seven o'clock. I didn't know what I had to tell you. Ah, oh, let me count. Should we cancel it? I'm like, no. I said like, no. Let's just let's just go. On. Let's just do it. Whatever. I mean, it could be the worst interview ever. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, but you really made me go deep uh, with your questions. You really made me think about what I'm doing because I, I never really thought about why I why I withdrew from yeah. uh, social media. My, my wife asked me the other day, you know, why am I not posting anything? You know, I, was yeah. like, uh, I, I, I don't know, and I don't think I, I didn't think about it. I didn't want to think about it. I just I just, I just know that I shouldn't be doing it. Um, because I had to let go of some things. Right. Yeah, and now you might like, it's, it's, it's very clear to me now what um, what the next step should be, what I need okay. to let go. Well, I have yeah. that effect on people. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I have this effect on people. This I don't is think why. I would have thought about it if we didn't discuss this. Yeah, well, we're so, almost, it's just a mirror. Everything's a mirror. But I, have, I want to ask you one final question because I'm really curious and then we'll wrap it up. So okay. I also almost canceled it which I think is really, really interesting because I lately, no. I bring, I, the people that I meet lately are all just, it's all in flow and there's no gap, there's no density. It's just like, okay, boom, boom, boom. Like, and I don't schedule, I don't plan out the questions or anything because this is always what happens now. And so this morning I was really feeling off and I kept thinking, I'm going to email him. I'm going to let him know. My wife even said, because <laughs> I was talking to her about it. She said, I mean, if it's a terrible interview, you just don't have to put him on the podcast. <laughs> And so you had the same thought, which is really funny. So then I, I almost reached out to you and said, Hey, I know you're intuitive. What's your intuition telling you? Do you want to go or not go? And then I said, you know what, I'm going to go just kind of go. Th- I hadn't done my morning routine because my, my kids are off school today. So like, I'm going to do my morning routine, do a little walk meditation. And then if I still have a no, like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I just do the, uh-huh, uh-huh. like, just, I don't even try and get, you know, so that it's really no mind. And if I get the no, then I'm going to reach out to him and just be like, hey, let's reschedule. And then I sat for 30 minutes in meditation and I got like, uh-huh, 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 like you're supposed to meet him today. So how did you decide to not to not cancel? What was your process? Um, Do you even remember? No, I don't remember. Did you follow intuition? That's what I'm curious about. I don't remember. I just followed the intuition. Yeah. My mind, you know, my mental mind was, um, was telling me that, that I was tired. Yeah. Um, you're tired. You know, cancel this. You haven't slept since yesterday. Right. Um, David, you to understand that you haven't slept. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was the that was the chat that I was going to. But like I told you, when I hear that voice, I know it's not really it's not. You know, it's I not just, mm-hmm. so I waited for the intuition, and my intuition said, when I went out, like I just took a walk outside, and as I was coming back inside, um, told me, you know, that I should just do it. <laughs> so we both um, we both followed the no intuition. There was no for me to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> exactly. I was like, okay, yeah. I've heard the real voice now. Um, That's cool. I'm going to go ahead with it. Yeah. Well, what a full circle end. So it's, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, I I want I I think I need to write a big chapter on intuition. <laughs> yes. In, in, in the book, I'll try to explain. It's, it's so mysterious. Um, yes. But everybody has it. Um, everybody can. No, we don't have it. I think it just, it, it comes and it goes. It's just like yeah. a messenger. Just, yes. just, it yes. flows yes. in, yeah. it drops a message for you and yep. it goes out. Yep. Uh, yeah. It. So, yeah, we don't hold it 24 7. No. No. Uh, yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. So, beautiful. I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain it. I will re- like, I'll, I'll listen to it. I will ask you to come back with some answers for me uh, because it, it brings answers to my, to my questions. Yes. And so that, that's why I trust it. And yes. the answers that it brings um, always gives me results in the physical world. Yes. That's so there's, too. you know, there's a link between that intuition, my, um, my own soul or spirit, yep. and my mind and the physical world. 
Yeah. Uh, because whatever message is it is bringing translates, you know, into something, is into real into physical reality. Yes. Same for me. Yeah. For me. Yeah. So it's just amazing. And, yeah. and I, I don't know what's going to come out of this interview, but I feel something very good. Um, maybe on its way to either me or you. Yeah. Well, yeah. great. And hopefully for anyone else that's listening to Well, thank you so much. And for really anyone else. else. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that we both decided. So, not to yeah, cancel. I think I will. Um, I might invite you on um, to, come, to come and speak. I really like the energy of this. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I get back to posting on social media, I'll, I, will, I will invite you. Come oh, speak to no rush, no rush. Whenever it's meant to be, and I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm glad we didn't cancel, and uh, we'll we'll be in touch. I really appreciate it. It was a great great conversation. Talk Thank to you, you soon. very much. All right, take care. I'm gonna hang up now. Bye. Bye.